Okay, in this video, we're gonna go over how competitive an applicant you really are. Now, great personal statement, great extracurriculars, great letters of recommendation, all these things are incredibly important in the med school application process. But the reality is the two most important things remain your GPA and your MCAT score. Now, AIMC actually publishes data for the last number of application cycles in aggregate and gives you a great breakdown on their tables. I've linked to those tables below. What I'm gonna do is pull out some of the data from these AAMC tables to give you an understanding of how competitive an applicant you are to US allopathic schools based on your GPA and your MCAT. Now, if you look at the table, X and Y axis give you GPA and MCAT, and actually what they've done is broken it down all the way from people, excuse me, with low GPAs, let's say under 3.0, to high GPAs, greater than a 3.79, and low MCAT scores in the 480s, all the way to really great MCAT scores, 520s and up. What I'm gonna do again is, is pick out a few points of this table to help illustrate some concepts. So let's say you look at the 3.0 to 3.2 range for total GPA, and you look at the MCAT range for 498 to 501. What do these numbers give you? Well, if you follow the numbers across and down, what you're gonna get is three different numbers in this table. The first are the total matriculants to medical school. The next is the total applicants, and the last is the percentage. So, between the years of, let's say, 2016 to 2018, if you look at students with a 3.0 to 3.2 GPA and a 498 to 501 MCAT, there were 74 matriculants to medical school, 511 total applicants, which gives you a percentage of about 14.5. Now, this percentage is, I think, the most important thing that you can look at because it gives you an idea. So, if you're an applicant in this range, you know that at least to start out with ballpark-wise, you have less than a 20% chance of starting medical school the following year. Obviously, these numbers are going to be impacted one way or the other, depending on a lot of different factors, but at least gives you an idea. Let's, let's pull out a couple more numbers to give you some more insight. Let's look at people with a high GPA, a 3.79 or above, and people with a MCAT score that's also equivalently high, let's say a 514 to 517. Pretty good MCAT score, pretty good GPA. What does that look like? Well, there were 17,000, sorry, 1,798 matriculants in that category. There were a little over 2,000 applicants for a percentage of 85.1%. So if you're somebody with a great GPA, a really solid MCAT score, you got a pretty good chance of matriculating into medical school. But notice that it's not 100%, right? You would expect, wow, I ended up with a 3.9 GPA and a 5.17 on the MCAT, I'm gonna get into medical school. Well, the reality is that it's not 100% because of poor personal statements, poor letters of recommendation, poor planning, poor school selection, all the different things that we're gonna talk about in all the different videos, but that's the reality that even with great MCAT, great GPA, not everybody ends up getting into medical school because they've made mistakes somewhere else on their application. Let's look at a couple more cells to understand a little bit better here. Let's look at people with a 3.79 GPA and between a 502 and a 505 on the MCAT. There we had 900, I'll put it in red, we had 920 matriculants to medical school. We had nearly 1,700 applicants 
for 54.4%. I utilize this 50% mark as a good barometer to understand if you should apply, if you should have backup plans. If you're too far below that 50% mark, you may want to think twice about applying in any given year. If you're right around that 50% mark, you may want to think about things like osteopathic schools as an alternative pathway. Because a coin flip chance of getting into medical school at the end of the day, well, half of you will, half of you won't. So if you're, if you're in the half that doesn't get in, what are you going to do? What is your backup plan? Have you thought about a gap year? Have you thought about what you're going to do to improve your chances, either moving up on the MCAT scale? In this case, you may not even be able to move up on the GPA scale, but maybe you could do a master's program, something to give you an edge up, right? So I like that 50% mark as a barometer. If you're way under that 50% mark, you gotta really think, should I apply this year or should I not? If you're way above that, maybe you're a really good applicant, but if you're right in that smack dab in the middle, think about things like osteopathic schools, think about how can I maybe boost my way up here with something else. Now, I want to dig a little bit deeper into this number for a second because the other thing that AAMC does, which is so helpful, is that it actually breaks it down into ethnicity as well. So let's again look at the 3.79 range, so people with total GPAs higher than 3.79 and people with MCAT scores between 514 and 517. Great applicants, all, all told. Now, if you look at a breakdown of ethnicities, and let's take Asians and African Americans as our two categories. They also break it down for Hispanics, for whites, Native Americans, and a few other ethnicities. But let's look at these two as illustrative purposes. Well, if you take the African Americans, for example, again, with a 3.79 and a 514 to 517, there were a total of 202 matriculants and a total of 220 applicants for an acceptance rate of around 92 percent. Pretty awesome. If you take Asians in that same category, you are now looking at 630 matriculants out of 1,213 applicants for a percent of approximately 52. So for the African Americans, we were looking at 92% of students with those grades and GPA, sorry, with those GPA and MCAT got in, whereas for Asians, it's 52%. So that's how you dig a little bit deeper into these numbers to understand, okay, why are only 85% of students getting in? Where do I stand? Well, if I'm an Asian with these same numbers, ooh, I actually just have a 52% chance of getting in, or about 52% of people in my cohort will get in. Whereas if I'm an African American, it's 92%. So you have to dig deeper into these numbers. You will even see people down here in this category with less than a 3.0 and less than a 480 or 480s 480 on the RMCAT, you will see some percentage points of people getting in. Let's say it's 1%. And you'll say, wow, 1% of those applicants get in. Who are those 1%? Well, you gotta dig deeper. Maybe they're underrepresented minorities. Maybe they've cured cancer or have some amazing research. Maybe they've done something really awesome. Maybe they have great ties to the state or the school, the, the schools in the state that they're applying to. A lot of different factors that go in here. So bottom line is the tables from AAMC provide a exceptional amount of data that you should look at as an applicant to understand if you're competitive or not. I've given you some key points here to look at and some key numbers to think about. Remember, if you're way under that 50% range, maybe you're in the 14, maybe you end up in that 14% range. Well, should you really apply or do you have to do something to improve your chances substantially before you apply? Whereas if you're here, okay, my chances are pretty good, but let's make sure the rest of my application is really awesome. Particularly if I'm a African American, particularly if I'm an Asian actually, because only 50% of those are going to end up getting into school. So how do I separate myself? I'm not doing it with numbers necessarily here. 
I have to do it with something else. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how to use the table, specifically it's table 23, 24, and 25 of the AAMC, and gives you an idea of who makes a competitive applicant and who doesn't.